U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions has once again defended the zero-tolerance immigration policy as the debate over separating children from their parents goes into its second week. Despite Trump cracking down on the separations, the domestic and international community have continued their criticism. What is the president's endgame and what does it mean for American immigrants? This is Roundtable with me, Shuli Ghosh. The White House blames the current situation on the Obama administration, saying it was too soft on illegal migrants. How has the immigration policy changed in the last few years? And why is it taking Congress so long to vote on a new bill? Migrant children in desert tent camps and chain link cages, separated from their parents who'd enter the US illegally. The United States will not be a migrant camp and it will not be a refugee holding facility. Global outrage spread quickly over US President Donald Trump's zero tolerance policy on immigration. Will the crackdown continue, or can the anti-immigration policies be challenged? During the election campaign, Trump took a hard line on immigration. This year, refugee admissions have been capped at 45,000, the lowest since Congress created the modern refugee program in 1980. In five years, the number of US Border Patrol agents will be increased to an unprecedented 26,370. In April, the administration directed prosecutors along the Mexican border to have a zero-tolerance policy towards immigration. The president blamed the previous administration for the crackdown. DHS is no longer ignoring the law. We are enforcing the laws as they exist on the books. As long as illegal entry remains a criminal offense, DHS will not look the other way. But the law hasn't changed since Obama's presidency. The way it's implemented has. First-time offenders were often deported without charge and families were seldom separated. Trump was not so lenient. Over 2,200 children have been separated from their families. The pictures of children being held in what appear to be cages are deeply disturbing. This is wrong. Global outcry and critical Republicans forced President Trump to back down last week, reversing his policy after repeatedly claiming only Congress could fix it. The new executive order allows children to be held with their parents while they are detained. But law states children must be released after 20 days. The Department of Homeland Security has started reuniting families. In a tweet, Trump said people should be deported with no judges or court cases. Congress is now voting on a more robust immigration legislation, but the Republican Party moderates have rebelled. A conservative bill failed last week. The compromise bill will be voted on this week. If it passes, it's likely to do so solely with Republican support. A unified front among Democrats, but a split within the Republican Party. Just how far will the Trump administration go to reduce illegal immigration? Well, joining us now from Washington, D.C. is Jan Halper Hayes, the former vice president of Republicans overseas. In Georgia, in the U.S., is Atenas Barola, a U.S. immigration policy researcher at Human Rights Watch. She's also former director of an immigration integration center in Charlotte. We also have journalist and broadcaster Carol Gold in the studio and Brad K. Blitz, professor at Middlesex University and director at British Academy modern slavery program. Good to have all of you with us. Um, Carol, let me start with you because we saw Trump doing this, uh, this unprecedented U-turn on separating children from their parents, but the larger problem remains of how the US is going to deal with illegal immigration. Yes, but, but he did a U-turn on the U-turn because the day after the U-turn, he tweeted, um, I don't want Republicans doing anything about immigration. Uh, forget it. Uh, we can deal with it after the November elections when we, the whole country turns red, meaning red states. The country becomes Republican. 
uh, <clears throat> he basically did a U-turn. So he's U-turn. basically saying, but then, why bother then, trying to fight this and then the next now day when he, we can have a clear run? Yeah, but he had this. Ex- he had this extraordinary event the next day, which he or- obviously organized quickly, of a bunch of people who had, who sadly had lost loved ones who were killed by immigrants. And he used this as, a, as an extra example of how we have a big problem with immigrants and uh, these people have lost loved ones, some of them were injured, and that was a, a, a quite a long and big event on television. And, and some of it was uh, transmitted here in the UK. So he, he did a U-turn and a U-turn and a U-turn. And uh, at the moment, he doesn't seem particularly enthusiastic about it. He has now gone off to, on a tangent about a restaurant that threw his press secretary out. So uh, yes. it, it, I was thinking, if Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders had been elected, what a boring time we would have had. Jan, what do you make of uh, President Trump's uh, zero tolerance policy and the fact that he doesn't want any kind of judicial process, he just wants immigrants deported at the border? Well, I I don't take it that he did a U-turn after U-turn after U-turn. I'm rather fed up with Congress. But I think really what he was saying when he tweeted was that he didn't support any of the House bills that were coming up because Ryan's bill is really a never Trump bill. It is a traitor. They did not whip. When you say whip, it's really encouraging House members to vote for the Goodlatte bill, which failed last week. And um, the well, that, that was seen as a very hard line bill, wasn't it? So that was never expected to go very far. No, the Goodlatte bill was actually the compromise bill that agrees with President Trump's agenda. It is the Paul Ryan's bill that they have now not voted on, thank goodness, because that really would have there would not be a red wave in November had the House passed that. But what I'm more concerned about is how long this problem has been going on and how Congress hasn't dealt with it. And the more I've looked into it, the problem lies in the House more than the Senate, because in 06 and in 13, the Senate passed immigration bills and the House rejected them and said, we'll come up with our own. And the House is the one that keeps stalling and not resolving this problem and keeping it as a political issue. Uh, Atanas, do you agree with that? Why is this uh, po- a political issue, as Jan said? Why has it been going on for so long? Uh, I agree to a certain extent in that the reason it keeps going on is because our immigration system is broken, right? And it has been for a very long time. However, in just blaming our immigration system, we're ignoring the larger issues that are causing people to try to flee to this country, right? People are not undertaking this journey because it's easy or because it's fun, the vast majority of them are undertaking it in fleeing for their lives. Um, and seeking asylum is, is not a crime, not under U.S. law, not under international law. Well, President Trump and, says that the, the, this wave of immigrants is like an infestation. What do you make of his language? Uh, the language is inflammatory. Um, it's honestly, it's racist to be calling a surge of Central American and other migrants, an infestation. Um, It's just, unfortunately, it's aligned with a lot of his other rhetoric, particularly talking about Mexican immigrants and other people of color. And it just ignores the reality that these, a large portion of these people are fleeing for their lives. You know, that isn't exactly fair because the fact is that Jeff Sessions and the president came out and said any asylum seekers can go to the ports and not be considered illegals, that there will be people there and you will not be separated from your family. The one, the biggest concern is 10,000 of those 12,000 children came by themselves or they came with traffickers. A lot of people in the US, President Trump uh, included, uh, believe that they are battling Um, uh, an insupportable problem and that illegal immigration as opposed to legal avenues of entering the US is posing a a huge problem. Would you agree with that? What I think is insupportable is that we have children who have been put in cages under order as a result of what the US Attorney General and the US President have put in place. Now, 
we can try to deflect blame onto Congress, but we know that this is a policy that was put in place by the Attorney General, and as a result, more than 2,000 children have been separated from their families. Many of them will not be reunited with their families. It's going to take a huge effort to find out where they are, because how to relocate them. Because some of them are very young and can't even yes. say who their, yes. who their parents are. Some of them are. are extremely young. Some of them are still in, in diapers, in nappies. They can't speak English. They can't speak English. And what's more, this is happening across several states. So first of all, the focus was on Texas. More recently, it's been on Florida. We know that there are centers and shelters in many parts of the U.S. Children have been separated. And what's more, the U.S. president is, as you introduced, is violating a basic constitutional principle regarding due process. Yes. Is, but was May this I, policy yeah, not... Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just want to pose the question. Wasn't this yeah. policy actually uh, a policy that existed under President Obama? It's just that they didn't um, enforce no, it in this true. way. It was the, more the, the catch and release system. No, and when this keeps being mentioned, the, 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 I become less a journalist and more... Uh, uh, I feel more maternal. I feel like a human being. Uh, when I was a little girl, I was very sick. I was sick for several years. If it hadn't been for my parents, I'd have been dead 50, 60 years ago. These children, even if they spoke English, how do they know how much insulin they need every two hours? How do they know, where, where, can I please have my inhaler? I'm asthmatic. These children are just thrown into cages, away from their parents. Some of them, I wouldn't be surprised if one or two of them or more die. Because even though they do have medical staff, and all of these detention centers are well staffed with medical people, if you leave a child for a few hours who has a serious daily chronic medical condition, they can die. And these kids can't express themselves because I would say 90% of them don't have any English. Okay, That's, I mean, that is really. But you know, never terribly. in US immigration history has the state deliberately separated children yes. from their parents since yes. abolition. Yes. And what we know is that even in the darkest hour when, for example, Japanese Americans were incarcerated, children were, for the most part, kept with their families. They were placed with host families. They were not incarcerated as we are seeing. Well, let's, let's is, ask Jan. Jan, why would President Trump allow, why would anybody in the, the higher echelons of the Trump administration allow that to happen in the first place, removing children, some of them very young, from their families and putting them into, we've seen the pictures, concrete floors, steel cages? Yeah, you've seen the pictures, and have you realized that those pictures are from 2014 during Obama? Oh, please. Have you seen the... Oh, you, know, you, you know what? Look, God. first off, you know, honestly, I am uh, one who really feels for those kids. But you know what? 1.4 million children are separated, uh, legal children are separated from their parents because their parents have done something illegal. 40% of our border agents speak Spanish. That's 40% of them. And these people, before they cross the border, are notified that they will be separated. Now, I, I'm sorry, it's 2,200 children compared to 1.4, and it's parents doing something illegal. I feel very bad that these kids are separated, but they're parents are the ones that had a choice not to do it. They had a choice to turn back. They are given that option to go back to their country. A tennis from a, so from a human rights a point of view, what do you make of thing. that argument? Uh, it's just, it's, it's wrong. First of all, um, the children who are being separated from the, within the United States are being separated from their parents after their parents have actually either been found guilty of a crime or after there has been an actual investigation to merit the separation of the children. Yeah. Furthermore, the administration says that asylum seekers that try to follow the legal way and present themselves at a port of entry won't be separated. But A, they're not allowing people to present themselves at a port of entry. There's Mexican immigration officials as well as U.S. immigration officials turning people away. But Jan is making the point that there are legal paths of entry into the U.S. Why aren't right. those channel channels and being used? Because the, the U.S. government doesn't allow people to. Now, not everyone, but they are turning people away at the legal, the so-called legal paths, the port of entry.
right? They're turning people away who try to get there. And they're also separating families who turn themselves in there. So people are faced with this hard and rock place where they can try to present themselves at a port of entry. Some of those bridges now have a six, a 10, a 20 day wait outside in sweltering heat. This is 100 degree weather. People are having to sleep outside. And even aside from that, from, as you said, a human rights perspective, the United States should not be prosecuting asylum seekers. And we haven't, we should not be criminally prosecuting asylum seekers. And we haven't historically. Obama did expand the family. As long as they come through legally. As long they're as they trying. come through as legally, they're, they're not being processed. Nothing. Jen, the president said yesterday in a tweet, and it was seen all over the world, no more courts, no more judges. We throw them out. They come to our border, they get sent back. Yeah, and well, Anna Navarro, who is a Republican strategist, was on CNN last night, and she said he is violating the Constitution. She's a Republican. He's violating the Constitution. Everyone is entitled to due process, whether they're an American citizen That's right. or not. That's right. And he is saying no more courts, no more judges, no due process. Just send them all back. Get rid of them. And he called Mexicans coyotes. I'd like to remind him that a coyote, Guillermo del Toro, won Best Picture at the Oscars. And Mexico has a distinguished history. And, and when a president does this, I don't even remember Richard Nixon in my lifetime referring to, to fake news, coyotes, infestation. It, it, this is beginning to be almost, it's almost uh, And a lot of a linking of, of, of um, uh, immigrants who come across the border, a lot of linking them to criminal gangs, uh, which we've also seen Trump uh, saying that, you know, there will be, uh, and the Trump administration saying there will be an increase in crime if they come. But actually, I think research shows that, that very few of those uh, migrants who are coming off the border are linked to to criminal gangs and, and hasn't the what's number more of... many not only are many of these people victims and potential victims of criminal gangs but when you talk about the door to asylum being open you should also recognize that the attorney general has revised the asylum rules with respect to the basis upon which one may claim asylum and in many other countries you can claim asylum on the basis of persecution, not just by a state, but by non-state actors, including criminal gangs. And in the US, that provision is now being revised. So people who say, I'm under threat, I'm being persecuted, the gang of ABC has done this to me, the basis of your claim will be rejected. And is it the case that paths to legal immigration are being shut? We've seen the threat to DACA, um, uh, the suspension of the Central American Miners Program, which allowed legal migrants from uh, El Salvador, Guatemala and Honduras to bring their children across. So uh, is there a squeeze on the legal ways that uh, yes. migrants because can go to the US? Because, as you said yesterday, the president said, no more courts, no more judges. That really, that's really a shocking statement. The, one of the things Americans pride themselves on is due process. What, what, whoever you are, whatever gang you belong to. And yes, there are criminal gangs. <clears throat> there are uh, people causing terrible trouble in the United States who come from these countries. But it's about time he concentrated on schools, funding of schools, on medical care, on the big issues, rather than having what has become I said it in my notes this morning before coming here. Mexico's become an obsession. The, the Mexican... And the sale of guns to yes. gangs in yes. Central America. Yeah. The organized trafficking and sale mm. of weaponry to Central America. Jan, is it the case right, that, that Trump... Right, fast and furious, under Obama. <laughs> well, I, I want to know, I mean, is, is President Trump, uh, is he just not differentiating between economic migrants and those seeking asylum because of terrible, terrible situations back at home because of war or, or, or the threat of, uh, of losing their lives? And, or does that not matter to him? Well, we have always taken people in and we have cared about people. But what about our 50,000 veteran homeless? We need to take care of our own. I have become it's not an very, war. very hard line on this. I, I, I get the point of what you're saying. Um, shouldn't there be, uh, you know, more focus on problems domestically within uh, the U.S. before you start worrying about all the other people who are who are coming to 
to, to your door. Yes, I mean, as I said before, there are so many issues in the United States that need being dealt with. <clears throat> we saw yesterday the Dow Jones fell 300 points because the tariffs that the president has imposed are rebounding on American manufacturing, on the relationship with Canada, on the relationship with Europe. The, the complication is added of Brexit in the UK. So there are some very important issues that need to be I mean, to be immigration is not just and an issue for the US. I mean, it's, no, a, it's a big, it's, big issue across, yes. uh, across Europe. Um, I, I read over the weekend that the Defence Secretary has now uh, confirmed that two military bases are going to be used to house migrants. We don't really know in the US, how that yeah. in the US. We don't know how that's going to work. A tennis, um, I, I don't know if you have any more details about this, but this idea of putting migrants into, into military bases while their cases are being decided, what do you make of that? It's incredibly troublesome. Um, to begin with, the fact that the president's executive order calls for families to be held there, which is in violation of an agreement that says that children have to be held in the least restrictive setting possible and that they have to be licensed child care facilities. Military bases are not licensed child care facilities, um, nor are they appropriate places to hold asylum seekers. The government already unfortunately tried to do this in Artesia in 2015 and was quickly shut down when it became clear that that was not an appropriate place to be detaining um, families. And furthermore, this is the Department of Defense they they have nothing to do with this right it's the department of homeland security if you have or if they want to be detaining families which they should not be um that certainly shouldn't be under the department I mean, of defense yeah, it does yeah. beg the question why on earth is the military getting involved in uh, sorting out uh, an immigration problem it becomes you are sort of making the whole thing a I don't know, a security issue or a military issue, and it's sort of... Yes, I, I, I was stunned the other night when I saw the little ticker tape running on the bottom of the CNN screen saying Pentagon to house 20,000 unaccompanied children, and I actually put on Facebook, am I hallucinating? Is this, is this a mistake? But I suppose the way the wheels of bureaucracy run, that the Pentagon has to take charge of this. I can't even imagine Donald Rumsfeld, former defense secretary, who was a very right wing. But look, I mean, this is, this is clearly a, a hot like button this. topic in the US right now. Jan, do you think there's going to be any movement in Congress? Are we going to see uh, some kind of uh, immigration reform? What's it going to take? We need the Senate to pass it because we need 60 votes. We need to get rid of some of these never Trumpers that are actually going to hold to the Trump agenda. And let's keep in mind, it is the Democrats that held up DACA. They wanted 800,000, the Dreamer kids. They wanted um, amnesty for 800,000. And in Trump's State of the Union, he offered 1.8. Right now, as far as the Democrats are concerned, Trump cannot have a win. And so there, that is why I go back to my initial point. I am done with these political players that they need to become problem solvers and they need to think about what they're holding up and how many people that they are harming by not putting the policies in place. Uh, I'm sorry, yes. can I just point, the, the, Demo, the, the idea that the Democrats held Dealing up DACA is issues. just false. The one who ended it, been with yes. he going ended back it, over is this issue. Critical issue. That the Republicans, or the Democrats, I'm sorry, ended DACA when it was President Trump very clearly announced the end of the program and trying to hold those people hostage in order to get them status at the cost of everyone else is just unrealistic. And thankfully, the Democrats have not stood for that. Yes, and also prominent Republicans like Orrin Hatch, Mitch McConnell, Paul Ryan in the past week have said they do not want to see children separated from their parents. They want reunification of families. And these are prominent Republicans. Right. And I'm sorry, it's not the Democrats, anti-Trumpers. This is a human issue. This is something that has really- No, 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 it's not reunification. of America. Carol. Carol, reunification is one thing, but solving the whole immigration issue is what I'm talking about. That is the key thing. Well, what about starting with the issue of reuniting these children with their parents yeah. 
and respecting constitutional provisions with respect to due process. Yes. You know, what about actually starting with things that have worked, which we know work, which keep families together, and Absolutely. which protect both U.S. citizens and those who are resident on U.S. territory? That's something we're not hearing from the president. Uh, and what the president is very keen on, of course, is this wall that, that he wants to, uh, to, yeah. to fund, which he's hoping will uh, also get con through Congress. Do you think we're going to see that? We're going to see a, the, the, the culmination of this wall separating uh, Mexico from the US? At the moment, Congress and the Senate are Republican majority. <clears throat> Sorry. And it's possible that this will be passed. But then he's saying, let's not get involved in any legislation on these issues until November. Well, what will happen then? If the, if the Congress and the Senate flip, he, he will never get his wall because I wouldn't, I think there's a lot of many Republicans who are against it, but uh, it, it's difficult to say the wall issue will probably be attached to another piece of legislation and it goes on and on and on. But. Uh, you're so right about solving this issue now of these children, yeah. some of whom, as many ex-Republican administration officials have said this week on CNN and NBC, they may never see their parents again, simply because of the problems of bureaucracy and the language yeah, problem. Yeah, it's clear. It's not just a, a constitutional issue or, or a political issue. It's a very human yes. issue as well. Uh, thank you very much indeed, all, all of you, for joining me. A big thank you to all my guests. Uh, and thank you at home for watching this edition of Roundtable. That's it from me. Until next time, bye for now.